On the previous episode of the K-Swap Civic Build, I put on a new drag-reducing Y-body front end to clear my 255 width tires better. This front end required that I change my headlights over to the 99 spec design. I then put on a 60-inch PCI rear wing to create some rear downforce to match my soon-to-be-created front downforce. Put on some 5-inch PCI side skirts to reduce some more drag, and the car is starting to look like a real track machine. Let's keep going in this episode. You might notice something else missing from the front end of this car, and uh, it's not the championship white paint, which I will get to that. We're missing a big front splitter, and in this class I'm allowed to run a 3-inch splitter from the front of the bumper, so we're going to make a custom one, obviously, um, that's going to go around this, and um, I am no aero engineer, I don't really know the best way about how to make the most downforce out of a splitter, but I know somebody who does know how to make the most downforce out of a splitter. Uh, my name is Mike Lewin from Professional Awesome. Uh, my name is Dan O'Donnell with Professional Awesome, and we're working on Ben Thorne's Honda Civic Hatch. There's a lot more that goes into aerodynamics than you might think. It's extremely important that the front and rear downforce are equally matched. Too much front downforce and the rear of the car will actually lift up. Professional Awesome is here to take measurements, check my suspension setup, weight balance, and existing aero mod to make sure that we create a front splitter that is perfectly balanced for the car. We came out here to work on Ben's aerodynamics on his car to make more downforce, make it as efficient as possible. His existing product choices are great. Worried about efficiency, low drag. The most important thing is having as efficient package as possible. So that means the highest downforce for the least amount of drag, um, because the, the power the car um, will put out isn't extremely crazy like some other time attack classes. You know, in, in terms of simplicity, aerodynamics are fantastic for allowing you to put more load on the tires. Load on the tires allow you to turn harder, allow you to do brake harder, those types of things. And generally, in a normal sense, load would be provided by mass or weight, right? The vehicle weight. Now, what aerodynamics allows you to do is make load through downforce, basically the literally the atmosphere is pushing on the car downward. And when you are able to do that, you have that load on the vehicle without the added mass and inertia. Basically, when you go to turn, those types of things, you still have good load, but you don't have that added mass, which is just the best thing in the world. Realistically, that's what makes speed. That's what makes you allow, allow you to go through the corners quicker. And that's what allows you to brake harder. It can also decrease drag. So there's very little downsides. We're going with the wood splitter. We generally recommend a half inch, but we're going with a three quarter this time because it's uh, a little bit more robust. It's a little stiffer. Those times things rigid, and that's what Ben's asking for as well as it'll it'll last a little bit longer because it is stronger. For the new class that Ben's going to be competing in, he's a little underweight, and so that weight being you know low in front of the car, it's good for the CG. It's good for the car. The rules allow for about three inches from stick out of the bumper. That means three inches extension from any point in that bumper. That, that's a really simple type of splitter to use. There's two ways that that splitter will make downforce. One, air will pile on top of it in terms of the front of the car. If you're looking down, it'll actually pile on that three inches of stick out. The other way that the splitter makes uh, downforce is by literally splitting the air and some of that air going under it will be accelerated. And once it's accelerated, it creates a low pressure zone under that splitter. And that whole big blade then turns into a large element that actually gets sucked to the ground. And because of that, you can make a lot of downforce if you do it correctly um, and design the system so that it has the correct rate, those types of things like we're talking about, and uh, it, it'll work a lot better if you do it right that first time. Making downforce correctly is a hotly debated topic. Professional Awesome has been making downforce products for Time Attack competitors for years. They've also competed themselves with an unbelievable class-winning record-breaking Evo 8. I'm not taking this Civic to a wind tunnel because it's extremely expensive, and Professional Awesome already knows what to do to maximize downforce and minimize drag. And as far as the class rules that are required in my class, this is the maximum downforce minimum drag setup for my Civic. We use this clevis and rod end, and it clamps onto the rod, and we do this because we built in a little bit of angularity into the, um, the quick releases so you can set your angle, your pitch, to get as much performance out of it as possible. And these allow you to make use these rods that are really strong. Um, once you put them all together and assemble them, they're extremely strong. They can handle a ton of load, but they're also slightly flexible. You can see how it's got a little flex to it. But if you hit something, 
they'll take a little bit of a flex, like they'll take that little flex, and they won't hurt your other components that you're mounting to. With the splitter design complete, it's time to take it all back apart, so we can get everything painted. Okay, while we're waiting on the bodywork to get painted, I'm going to put some extra support bracing onto this splitter. Uh, the guys at Awesome said that this splitter, uh, because we made it so thick, doesn't actually need a ton of bracing, but I like going overkill and I'm still underweight on the car. So uh, it's not gonna hurt anything by adding any extra bracing, just gonna take a little bit more time. So uh, I have some angle iron here. I'm going to put basically straight across to prevent the splitter from bowing over time. Um, and then I have another one that's gonna go on the back here. And uh, because I wanna leave the bottom part of this splitter as flush as possible, I actually bought a router and I'm just gonna route out all these little um, holes where the elevator bolts go and also slits where I'm gonna put the bracing so that way the bottom of this splitter is perfectly flush. It's important that the bottom of the splitter is flush as that's where a lot of downforce is generated. So I have some carriage bolts that I'm using to keep the bottom end slick. I'm even going to route out the elevator bolts to help them sit flush on the bottom as well. Every little bit helps. The bracing helps keep everything very rigid, and now it's time to seal the wood with some black paint and clear coat deck sealant. Well, obviously the splitter is painted, but it is also sealed, so uh, shouldn't get uh, soggy or anything like that when it rains. Um, but while we're waiting on that to dry, because it's gonna take a while to dry, I have gotten my new painted parts back in, in their championship white. So we can put these on now while that's drying. Okay, so now that we have the bumper on and painted, we're gonna cut it up. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have any ducting for my radiator cooling, which I do need. I ordered this specifically with these holes not cut out because I am not gonna cut out this hole size. Um, ideally, I wanna keep drag down, which means the smallest hole possible, the smallest opening possible. Generally, a rule of thumb is about one third of the radiator core size. So we'll measure the uh, square inches of the radiator core, and that will be the size of the opening. Blah! That's the sound of VTEC cracking. I've cut my bumper opening to about one third the size of my radiator core. Now it's time to create some ducting to route that air into my full-size radiator. The ducting took hours to build, and honestly, it's not that exciting to watch. It's mostly measuring out flat panels, cutting, and making some more bracketry. Eventually though, the ducting began to take shape. But before I could finish it off, I ran out of supplies. I'm gonna pick up some rubber hose to protect the edges of my ducting, and some spare bolts, okay, well, a lot of spare bolts, and a few more drill bits. Because this ducting, we wanna get it as close to the radiator as possible to make sure that the airflow is forced through the radiator. Uh, some parts might touch, and I don't want that metal-on-metal -metal contact to rub a hole through my radiator. So we're putting this fuel hose on the end here 
to prevent that rubbing from happening. This is this is kind of like a makeshift grommet, if you will. Um, but you can use this in all sorts of applications. If you have any like metal on metal contact that might be rubbing, you can cut some hose, put it on the end of it, and, uh, and it won't rub anymore. And with the ducting complete, all of my arrow is almost done on this car. It's time to get rid of my OEM 97 spec Type R hood. It doesn't fit my 99 spec front bumper, and it's made of metal. We're trying to keep our center of gravity low, so let's replace this hood with a carbon fiber one. Carbon fiber is brittle, and unfortunately, the company that I ordered this hood from didn't package it right and it arrived cracked. But that's okay, we won't look too closely at that. This hood is 9 pounds lighter, which means I get to put more ballast weight in the car at a lower and more centered position. And now that I'm hooked on carbon, I'm going to replace the OEM mirrors with some more drag reducing APR carbon fiber mirrors. Okay, just removed the stock mirror, obviously, because we are putting in some not stock mirrors. Now it's controversial whether these actually reduce drag or not, I don't know, but they look cool, so I'm putting them on anyway. They're much smaller in footprint, so, and because I'm allowed to run them in the class, I'm gonna use them. And that's the final piece for my aerodynamic overhaul. I think it's time we take it to the track and see how this stuff works. I've come to my home track at VIR to test out the aero balance. It's gonna take me some time to get used to all of the increased lateral Gs, but I am blown away. Downforce is so much fun. It seems like the aero balance is pretty close, but I'll probably need a bigger rear wing. I'm glad that I came to test this stuff to make some more changes and dial in the car even more. This car is certainly faster than it's ever been. Throwing parts on a car won't make it faster if you don't utilize those parts to balance out the car. And after a year of testing this car with no aero, it's made the switch to downforce much easier to dial in. I can't wait to see how it performs in its new Time Attack class this year. But we're not done with modifying this car for the new class just yet. We've got some changes to make to the powertrain. 